Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to talk about a weirdness that's going on with uh, Ed K6SDW's um, antenna, uh, actually the transmission line, uh, that he's using a, um, that he's using. It says, hi Dave, I'm a huge fan and patron. Well, thank you, I appreciate that very much. Two questions, I use a commercial 40 through 10 meter, nine to one end-fed dipole, about 25 feet in the air. So he's got a um, ballon in there, um, and it's a question whether the turns ratio is three to one or nine to one. If it's nine to one, then he's got an 81 to one ballon, which I think might be a little better for an infed dipole, but this will work fine because it will take 50, multiply it by, if you were to multiply it by 10 and be 500, so it's 450 ohms. All right, and it's about 25 feet in the air. The question one, the counterpoise goes in and touches tree limbs and leaves, which is unavoidable. Is this okay? Now, one thing he did not say in here is whether this is uh, insulated wire or uninsulated wire. Um, if it's insulated wire, don't worry about it. Uh, if it is uninsulated wire, it, you can um, eventually rub into the tree where you get sap contact and it will change the um, impedance there and um, you know as the wind blows and so on you could see your antenna SWR swinging around quite a bit. Um, if the counterpoise works properly for you I'd, I'd leave it really unless you want to replace it but any you know the problem with the antennas is that everything affects everything and if you were to um, change this, change the counterpoise, it, it could change your tuning on your your antenna. Now second and more serious, uh, originally I had 20 foot RG8X extension uh, to the length of the coax using a, a barrel connector, simple barrel connector to extend them together. It's very common. Uh, my IC7300 using the MFJ939 I tuner worked all bands and was able to tune to very low SWR. Um, I'm wondering a little bit about that because these NFED antennas usually give you pretty good results across all the bands of interest and uh, you don't need an external tuner, you can just use the tuner in the radio, which is what I've done with an NFED antenna. But if you can't get uh, less than uh, two to one uh, on on the antenna. Uh, go ahead and use that tuner. Absolutely. Uh, worked all bands and was able to tune to very low SWR. However, when I removed the 20 foot RG8X extension, my MFJ 939I could no longer tune 40 meters, no matter how hard it tried. It's frustrating, isn't it? I've had that happen to me too. So I reinstalled the 20-foot section of coax, and now the, the 939i is happy, and I've gotten my 40 through 10 meter antenna back. Um, you know, my first impression is, good, leave it, don't touch it. <laughs> it works. Um, now, if you, you got to understand that what the tuner is tuning is tuning the combination of the antenna, the antenna and the coax. Let's take a look at uh, the MFJ 939i just to be sure. Okay, these are shack based tuners. Uh, so it is tuning a combination of the feed line and the antenna. And you've got a um, counterpoise on that thing too, which complexifies the feeding. Um, if you take the inserted part out uh, and just connect it direct or something like that, uh, you're going to change what you're tuning. And yes, it is possible the tuner will not tune it, 
the tuner goes up to SWR 10 to 1 um, about that. And this thing needs to be fairly stable. I mean, uh, uh, what can happen is that when you take that out on 40 meters, it creates a uh, odd multiple of a quarter wave, uh, which is a notoriously hard length of wire to tune. Uh, it only happens on one frequency, though. You go to a different part of the band and you you should be able to tune it. This antenna should tune all the way across the band. Um, Obviously, the simple thing to do is to leave the connection in and not worry about it. Um, do, why do I need to reinstall the 20-foot extension for the 9 to handle 40 meters, and does it indicate a problem? You, to, to get real simple, you need to put it in because that's what makes it work. And the 2, it doesn't matter. No, this is not a problem. This is not a problem in your radio. Uh, I mean, I could suggest things like whatever you put there instead as a short in it or something like that. One thing that you can do is take the end of the coax, right where it goes into the ballon, take it off and put it into a 50 ohm dummy load, and then go tune that. And uh, use your antenna tuner, uh, and you should find that it's 50 ohms. You got 50 ohm dummy load, you got 50 ohm coax, you should get one to one SWR on that thing. If you don't, something's wrong. But that is one test that you can do for that. Um, if you solder your own cables um, and you don't get solder into the, uh, the little holes properly, that can come and go and that can create uh, problems with tuning too. So I hope that helps. Uh, good luck, Ed, K6SDW, and enjoy being on the air, and I hope to see you there somewhere. Okay, so there you have it, and I hope that's helpful. I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams uh, in the USA for postage uh, price reasons. The items to be given away this time, it's a book called uh, Novel Antennas. It's this book right here. Um, from the Radio Society of Great Britain. I think I picked it up at Dayton. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, uh, QSL card, or simple one-page letter like this uh, where it just has uh, very little information that I need. Basically, uh, send it by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado 81432. I will be shipping via U.S. Postal Service, so include an address that works for that. Um, on whatever you send, <clears throat> make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case number one, your name and address and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. <laughs> Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Okay, electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place in the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. Note that I pay the book shipping, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. I mean physically destroyed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to, uh, don't forget to comment until we next meet 73.